Hi. So um, in, in modern JavaScript, especially enterprise applications, um, you know, speed is of an essence. And uh, TypeScript, I understand, transpiles to ES5, and then you practically, um, most of the times, you need to minify it, right? Mm -hmm. So it goes to the browser all the way minified. Mm -hmm. Now, in my experience, the worst bugs happen in production, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you need to have math files to um, see all the way back to your original code. Is there anything that will get me back past the minified code and the transpiled code to the right. original TypeScript? Right, no, that's a great question. Something I, I didn't show, um, but uh, you know, had I thought to show it, the, the TypeScript compiler can output map files. So it can get you from the TypeScript code to ES5 code with one map file. Uh, the next step, the minifier that you use, something like Uglify, will have to read in that map file and output a new map file that maps all the way back. And to my understanding, Uglify 2 can do that. So you might want to try that one out. Um, but yeah, more tools are going to be being able to read in source map files that are doing those kind of code transformations. Hi, yeah. Hi. Over here, Jonathan. Hey. Hey. Um, I have a question about type system. And specifically, how does it deal with nulls and undefined? Null and undefined. So currently, uh, it treats null and undefined as type any. It doesn't try to guess their type and assumes that you'll give us some type information about them. Um, we assume all types can be null. So we're nullable by default, if you will. Um, type systems like Flow and Closure Compiler are looking at ways to kind of turn on more nullability checks. And I think we're, we're kind of watching them and watching the good patterns that, that they're working on to see which ones we can incorporate. Um, because we're nullable by default, it'll probably be that you can turn off uh, being able to assign null, uh, but then you would still get the, the error checking there. Hi. Uh, will uh, TS config support glob patterns? Yes, I think that's going in here in a couple of weeks. Yeah, it should, it should be in soon-ish. But uh, I, I'm sure if, if they're watching back home, they're like, yeah, don't promise too much. But I, I think it is going in soon. All right, thanks. Have a question over here? Hi. Um, will it be easy to kind of self-host um, TSD repositories so that um, we could get uh, reproducible deployments and deployments that are not dependent on servers, like remote servers, that, are, that potentially go down? Right. Um, great question. I, it's been a while since I looked at the code for TSD. I looked at one of the early versions. And it was like dead simple, just had a file that mapped the, to the different like entries. It may still be that, that simple. You may want to just take a look. And you may be able to just scrape that out and put the kind of locally uh, hosted servers in there. Hi. Uh, so I'm playing around with it right now. And it looks like if I try to do classes kind of in the ES5 way, um, all of the type checking and all of the nice editor stuff doesn't work anymore. So if you, oh, you like, you try to encode your classes using ES5 functional closure patterns? Yeah, like using prototype and kind of how I would have done right, it originally. Right, right. So for stuff like that, and you might actually want to look at the TypeScript compiler itself. Um, so as a, as a fun fact, I think some people like to, to hear this. The, the TypeScript compiler is written in an ES5 closure style. Uh, we don't use any classes in the actual base compiler. And part of that is just for nice tightness. Um, what we use instead are, 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 interface, are interfaces. And I didn't really show that in, in this example. Um, but you can write an interface and then say this function has this particular interface. It's not going to infer it from all the assignments to this. But once you give it that interface, you can then use that type. Uh, later. That's that's right. So you, you kind of end up doing the same work that a class would do. Uh, sorry. Show the. So 
the question was, with functions, you can just type it uh, as an interface. Let me pull up. Wow, doing this on the fly is going to be fun. I might have to get other people. Ward, you want to yell out what I should write? Nice. OK, so you can make an interface. That's, let's just do a simple one. And we say this is, whenever I get instantiated, what comes out has a certain type. Right? So whenever I get called with new, uh, that's that's going to have a shape of x as a number and, and so forth and so on. And now I just have for any function that has this type, let's say it's like this, var f has type i. I'm not sure if I can do it this way. I'm, I'm winging this just a hair. Uh, you can't quite do it this way, but let's grab me afterwards and I will, I will work out what the pattern is. Yeah, yeah, but there, there is a kind of a, a trick that you can massage these together so you can get the interface, the instantiation, and the closure working together. Yeah. So uh, my name is Shai. Uh, small code is uh, beautiful many times. And when, when you add types, you just add characters to, to your text files, and it can make it uh, uglier, especially the generic uh, syntax that Actually, you started with it, showing, our, showing us the Java uh, code. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think about it? What do I think about as you add types that makes uh, the code making, uglier? Uh, uh, taking uh, some beautiness out of the, our code or something like that using type system. Hmm. Aesthetics. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think, I think all of us are a little bit skeptical if we come from a background of, of working with Java or working with these other languages that have a heavier weight type system where you know, I, I have to annotate a whole bunch of things to get any use out of it. Um, I think we're a lot further along in that path, like being able to infer a lot more of the type information so I don't have to, I don't have to put a bunch of annotations saves me having to write it. Uh, and I think it saves also the clutter, like you're saying in the code. You don't have as much clutter in the code. But the compiler is still able to kind of help me and do good tooling uh, through that. Um, so it's a trade-off. So I can, I can make my type system a little bit more sophisticated, uh, and I can infer more. Um, and then where I, where I really need the type information, I, I will end up sprinkling a couple of places to get like a fully typed thing start to finish. Uh, but yeah, I don't think there's a good answer. I think it's just, it's up to you for your project, your aesthetic, uh, which you're using. It doesn't seem like I answered your question. I wasn't sure if I. Yeah, Sorry, go ahead. I'm not sure it's my choice because when the libraries I'm using, they, they, they choose it and when I work with a team, when it becomes oh. a standard, oh, when, see, when it becomes. You're making me feel stupid for not showing this. Let me show this real quick. Yes, I know that I can use the library, but still when it becomes a kind of standard. So for any of the libraries that you're using, uh, I would guarantee you that almost all of them are in this site. It's definitely typed. So you can drop in one of the DTS files like I showed with Angular 2. Yes. People have gone and annotated like you know, jQuery or Ember or React, you can drop those in to your project without having to update any of the, the files. And as you call into that DTS file, you get all the type checking for you. One of the things that VS Code does is it goes one step further. So if you're writing in just plain JavaScript with no annotations anywhere in your JavaScript, you can call into these libraries, and if there's a DTS file, it can give you IntelliSense. Exactly. So it's like a drugs. And th then I put it into my uh, programs because the editor uh, helps me because of it. And then I have less aesthetics in my own programs. This is what, because everybody uses it and you have all the tooling around it. So it will come into my programs, into my team, and JavaScript will look like Java. Uh, I, I think, again, it's up to your, you know, your taste at that point. Yeah. Yeah, I was curious if you had any uh, examples of larger you know, enterprise apps that are using TypeScript and just the general process, uh, how it helped them out, you know, things sure. like that. Um, 
probably the best people to speak to that are the people actually working on those apps. But um, uh, I'm using VS Code. The main code editing section of VS Code is all written in TypeScript. It's hundreds of thousands of TypeScript, uh, lines of TypeScript. Um, they've been working with us for years, kind of behind the scenes, working on this, this kind of code uh, editor. Um, the Azure portal, if you, any, just out of curiosity, how many of you use Azure? So that's actually a fair number. Um, the Azure portal itself is written in TypeScript. That's like something like 1.5 million lines or something. I mean, it's pretty impressive. Um, and I think there is a couple of interviews with those guys that you can kind of search for and find. Uh, and they, they talk about their process of building up over time. Um, there's a couple ways that you can move an application to TypeScript. Back, uh, back when their early days, I think they just ended up spiking like a couple hundred thousand lines onto TypeScript and then running with it. Uh, not everyone is gonna do that. You, know, you might wanna do a file at a time and make it more incremental. Yeah. Hey, um, I have a kind of related question. I come from a Java background. I've been learning how to do things the JavaScript way. And uh, seeing things like this is actually, you know, it's a little bit more familiar to me. But I'm, I'm wondering what's the mental model of somebody who's coding in TypeScript? Do you, do you abstract out uh, all the, you know, the prototype stuff and think that there are classes? Or do you, uh, you know, do you see you're adding stuff to the prototype? Uh, w w what's the mental model there? What do you think right. about when you create classes? You know, I, I'm not even sure if there's like one way that people go about it. Um, because the type system is optional and because you can kind of jump in and, and just start writing code, um, like that's kind of how I generally do it. I tend to write it more like JavaScripty, and then when I feel like adding types, I start adding types, and then I start getting the checking. I'm sure some people that come from the Java background, they probably jump straight into doing classes and properties and generics, and, you know, everything that they're familiar with. They probably try to encode that in first. And really, there is no preference in TypeScript. You can just kind of use one or the other. Um, yeah. Hey, uh, so I'm not very familiar with TypeScript, and I was just curious, are you guys looking to roll types into the standards in the future? Hoping to, I, that's one of my long-term projects, is to work with um, the Google Closure team, to work with Facebook Flow, um, and to, to really kind of build up enough knowledge about how to, how to type JavaScript well that we can come up with a proposal and propose that to the committee. Uh, it's gonna take some time. I mean, we're still, TypeScript's you know, three years old, Closure's older than that, uh, but things like Facebook Flow are, are pretty new, and they're trying out a new set of techniques so we kind of still have to take time to see if those, uh, those will kind of pan out. We have a question in the back here. Yep. Uh, hello. Um, my company is using Google Closure and Angular for like three years, and I'm really in love with Google Closure. Why should I move to TypeScript? Should move to TypeScript. So some of the advantages of TypeScript over other languages um, are the kind of tooling. So I would say, you know, Give, give it an afternoon, play with things like VS Code and the Sublime plugin for TypeScript, uh, and start writing some of the same kind of code that you would write. Uh, being able to write the type annotation in line rather than in a comment is kind of nice. But then having all the autocomplete and error checking as you're typing your code, I think is one of the nice advantages of TypeScript. Uh, the compilers are gonna be kind of similar. Uh, one is doing, you know, they're both kind of doing error checking for you. Uh, the Google Closure Compiler does minification, so you'll have to add that to your tool chain. But I think the value for TypeScript is really in the editing experience and the ID experience. Yeah. Yeah, I had a couple of questions for the audience. I was curious as to how many people are actually already using TypeScript. And with the emphasis um, and the push now that Angular is, is using it, how many people are planning to use it? Okay, let's do a quick survey. How many people of you are already using TypeScript today? Okay, so about somewhere between a quarter and a third, maybe a quarter. How many of you are planning to use TypeScript, say, in the next six months? So almost the whole room. Which is, that's amazing. I mean, I'm, I'm humbled, actually, to be here kind of talking to you guys. That's awesome. So we have about five more minutes of Q&A, but I did want to give folks a chance to start looking at the schedule and see what we have. So up next, we've got Angular 2 server rendering. 
Uh, that's Jeff and Patrick, and that'll be in this room. And then next door is Deborah talking about Angular 2 forms. And then AngularJS application instances on demand is a little bit further over in the harbor room. And so definitely uh, go ahead and you know start thinking about that. So any more questions? Yeah, I think we still have a couple more, couple yeah, more we'll minutes for questions. We'll have a 15 minute break from 10.15 to 10.30. But if there's more questions, let's go ahead and do those. If not, feel free to come grab me in the hall, and I'd be happy to answer any. Thank you.